Hey, how's it going guys? Mr. Boss for the win here, and in today's Grand Theft Auto 5 video, we're going to be talking about the top 10 vehicles in Grand Theft Auto Online that you absolutely need to own. They're the most important in terms of their usefulness, in terms of their must-haveness, and just overall how much you'll use them in online. We're going to be talking about that right now. I'm doing this in kind of a response to a video I made a couple days ago, which was the 10 most worthless vehicles you could have in online. So hopefully this one will maybe introduce you to a vehicle that you didn't know, or might tell you about a vehicle that you need to maybe use a little bit more. So with all the way, let's not waste any more time and let's get it started. All right, our first vehicle today is the Buzzard Attack Helicopter. So the Buzzard is so useful in so many different situations. It's weaponized, it can uh, seat three of your other uh, friends or crew members or passengers. It's very quick. Uh, this is probably the go-to helicopter when it comes to you know speed, uh, carrying capacity and also, uh, you know, weaponized ability, being able to defend people off and stuff like that. So the Buzzard is by far like the most useful helicopter of all time. I use it in CEO missions, biker stuff, the bunker stuff now more than ever. So the Buzzard, like I said, by far one of the best. And the fact that you can have it spawned in instantly via the CEO system is pretty convenient too. All right, moving on, the next vehicle is the Mobile Operations Center. I cannot stress how important this vehicle is. So number one, the Mobile Operations Center is the only way in which you can get a couple of things, like it's required to get certain things. Number one is the MOC missions for like the Oppressor and the Night Shark and the uh, Weaponized Tampa. Without the MOC, you can't do that. Also, without the MOC, you can't get access to the Mark II weapons. That's the only place in which you can upgrade them to get new weapons and new ammo. It's also the only place in which you can upgrade certain vehicles. So, for example, the Insurgent Custom, the Technical Custom, and even the Night Shark. That's the only place you could put liveries on a vehicle like that. So, needless to say, the MOC is pretty useful, and it has to do with a ton of stuff in online. And there's a good chance going forward that Rockstar will Will utilize the MOC for a bunch of other things as well, whether it's more customization for vehicles or whether it's adding more Mark II weapons. So I would suspect going forward into the future, we're even going to see more uses out of this vehicle. So if you don't already own one, I would recommend that you get it rather quickly because when I'm making this video, which is on Monday afternoon, uh, it's actually got like 25% discounts on everything. So I would take advantage of this really fast if you don't have an MOC. It's beyond important for your free mode adventures and online. All right, vehicle number three, a explosive resistant armored vehicle. So my two favorite here would either be the Insurgent or the Night Shark. So I'm gonna let you guys determine which one you like the best. The Insurgent is a little bit cheaper. It also provides less armor resistance. It's a little bit slower, but it also has a little bit more stopping power. And of course, everything there is just vice versa for the Night Shark. It's more expensive. It has better armor plating. Uh, it's a little bit quicker, but it has less stopping power. So you guys can pick and choose between the vehicles. I didn't want to say like one is better than the other here because it honestly just depends on your personal preference. But you need a vehicle that can survive explosives, especially with all the explosive weapons and gadgets we have, uh, like the Oppressor and the Runer 2000, Sticky Bombs, Proxy Mines, the, you know, things that can be dropped on the ground and exploded uh, you know when you're a mile away so you need a vehicle that can survive heavy explosives now speaking of a vehicle that can also survive Number four, you need a vehicle that can survive an onslaught of bullets. And for that, I would either recommend the Duke of Death or the Karuma. Now, just like with this, there's a couple drawbacks. The Duke of Death can only seat two people. Karuma can seat four. Duke of Death has a little bit more stopping power and is quicker than the Karuma. The Karuma has a little bit more bullet protection, but it cannot survive a single explosive. Whereas the Duke of Death has a little bit less bullet resistance, but it can survive that one explosive, which could be important in a firefight. So once again, I'll let you guys determine which one you like the best, but you're going to need a vehicle that can survive bullets, whether it's from NPCs or other players. It's useful in contact missions, heists, and especially in free mode. Okay, moving on to vehicle number five, you're going to want at least one top tier supercar. Now, about seven out of every 10 races you see is going to be with a supercar. They're, they're just the most popular for races and I would say typically in general. So you're gonna need a good supercar. 
And I'm not here to tell you guys which one to get, because like I said, there's personal preferences, there's subjective uh, you know, differences, but you're gonna need one in the top five. So I would say you know, the new Wagner, which is also on sale, believe it or not, so take advantage of that. Uh, the Tempesta, you've got the Zintorno, you've got the Nero Custom, any of those vehicles would suffice perfectly for your go-to supercar. Each one are gonna have their own minute differences, but you might be really comfortable with, let's say, the T20, and you might be really uncomfortable with the Nero Custom. So I can't sit here and say, get this over the other, but at the end of the day, you're going to need a fast supercar because guess what? Seven out of 10 races are with supercar class. Now, what about the other three out of 10 races? Well. Glad you mentioned that because at the number six spot, you're gonna need a good sports car. Basically about the other 20% of those races are gonna be sports classes. So you're gonna need a good sports car. And the same thing here, I can't tell you which sports car to get. There's so many of them, but you wanna kind of stick in the top five, whether it's the LG, whether it's the uh, Masakro race car, the Jester race car, the Feltzer, it doesn't matter. You might have a favorite sports car. As long as it does well for you, you're gonna need something like that. Because just like with the supercars, the majority of stunt races, the majority of regular races are super in sports. So you're gonna wanna have a tag team of great vehicles like that that'll get you set and good to go for those events and for those races and for free mode as well. You want fast cars to be able to zoom around and doing missions and whatnot. So having a sports car and a supercar is perfect for that too. Vehicle number seven, the Phantom Wedge. So hear me out here. The Phantom Wedge is incredibly versatile. So obviously it can barrel through traffic. We know that it has a massive wedge on the front. But it's also one of the most unique vehicles. It can actually seat five people, which is pretty crazy. And because those people on the back that can sit on the, the back of the uh, cab itself have access to all their weapons, you essentially become like a mobile arsenal, which is amazing. Now, there's a couple other things about the Phantom Wedge you might not know that make it incredibly versatile. It can be used for a ton of other methods. Like, for example, you can hook the Phantom Wedge up to the back of trailers. So you can use it in VIP missions like haulage. But most importantly, Importantly, you can also hook it up to the back of your MOC, making it the most lethal and devastating cab that you can put on your mobile operations center, a vehicle that we talked about earlier in this video. So the Phantom Wedge has so many different uses outside of just being a vehicle that can push things out of the way, which is why I had to include it on this list as one of the ones you absolutely must own in Grand Theft Auto Online. All right, vehicle number eight, the Hydra. So the Hydra is added in the Heist update, and I can't say I love the fact that I have to put it on this list, but jets are gonna be in the game. And we've got a couple jet deterrents, like the new vehicles from Gun Running, but sometimes you really just have to fight fire with fire. Or there might be someone in the lobby that's totally trolling, and you gotta just grab a jet and take them out. And the Hydra is gonna be your best bet because the lasers only spawn at Fort Zancudo and there's no other really alternative. So the Hydra is pretty much a must have. It's pricey, it's $3 million, but sometimes you just need a VTOL military jet to take away some of your problems that you might have in Grand Theft Auto Online public lobbies. So that one right there is probably the one I might regret the most putting on this list, but I'm still gonna go with it. Anyways, let's move on to the number nine spot, and that is the newly added Oppressor. So I wasn't sure if I was gonna add this vehicle to this list because I was trying to think about it and I was like, well, what use does the Oppressor really have? Whenever I use the Oppressor, I'm just doing random stunts around the map, but it actually is quite useful, whether you're trying to evade someone or whether you're trying to take out another griefer or a troll or defend yourselves against a Hydra, like what we mentioned, the Oppressor is actually pretty useful. It's basically the Rocket Voltic, but better, and it's weaponized it, and it can fly. It can get you long distances without having to touch the ground. Because it's a bike, it can be spawned in instantly right in front of you with the uh, motorcycle club feature. So that's another reason why I wanted to put it on this list. The convenience for a vehicle like that is by far one of the best in the game we have. So I'm gonna keep the Oppressor on this list. If you can afford it, I do think it's a vehicle you need to own. It has a lot of functions and features, whether they're recreational or whether you're using them in missions. I still feel like you can do a ton with this bike and you can get a ton out of it. And last but not least, at the number 10 spot today, speaking of bikes, you're gonna need a bike. So whether that's a Shataro or a Hakatu Drag or a Bati, uh, you're gonna need a bike. If you're not doing a super or a sports car race, you're probably doing a motorcycle race. So that's pretty important too. Uh, I'm pretty sure that stunt races are only motorcycle, sports, and super. So keep that in mind. But also, if you're doing the time trials, 
Bikes are definitely going to be your best bet here. There's also a bunch of free mode challenges like the longest wheelie challenge, the longest stoppy challenge. Those can only be done with bikes, so that's something you're going to have to need. And grabbing them off the street isn't really convenient. So I would definitely recommend that you own a really quick bike. It's probably a staple to have in online. Now, probably an honorable mention that I wanted to include on this list was going to be the Cargo Bob. The Cargo Bob is very useful too, but because those spawn pretty much at every helipad, I didn't want to put this on this list because even if you don't own a cargo bob, they're still pretty convenient to just grab from really any part of the map. But anyways, that's all the information I'm going to be talking about for you guys in this video today. Top 10 vehicles that you absolutely must own in Grand Theft Auto Online. What vehicles would you add to my list or take away from my list? I'd love to hear from you guys in the comment section down below. If you guys did go and enjoy this video though, a like rating would of course be awesome. And also subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new or you like daily GTA 5 videos like this. With all the way, guys, like I said, thanks so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video.